So today I want to talk about disproving statements. But before we do, we need to look into two things. The idea of a universal quantifier, which means I, this applies to all in a set, and existential qualification, so that applies to one. So a statement which is a universal qualifier, you might see, for example, for all natural numbers, n, we have 2n greater than or equal to n plus 1. Now this one's from your textbook. So the key that's a universal qualifier is this for all part. So it means it applies to everything in the set. Um, ex existential qualifications is at least one. So the example might be there is one integer is there exists one integer Uh, n such that um, n plus 1 equals 2. Okay, so the existential bit which tells us so is that, that there exists. So that's what we're looking at, at least 1. Um, and that's what we want to be able to prove. So this part in the chapter is about disproving statements. Um, so we can disprove something by simply showing that there is one case where it doesn't work. So in this case for all natural numbers we disprove by showing there is one case where it actually doesn't work. Um, however in the existential qualifications what we need to look at um, is maybe a proof by contradiction or contraposition with some of the things that you've done. So if we want to prove, if we want to look at um, a one example, we can look at some of them in the, in the textbook. So we're going to call it proof by counter uh, counter example. So what we have, and the one that most textbooks use, or most things you look on the net uses, is you have some function n, which equals n squared minus n plus 11. Um, and we might say fn is a prime number for all natural numbers. So we're going to say that fn is prime. So how I disprove this would be to find one number of n for which fn is not prime. Um, so we need to go through and do that. So to do that, we can do trial and error. So we can go say, okay, if n is uh, 10, for example, we can say 10 squared minus 10 plus 11. Well, that equals 101. And you can go through and do this. So you just need to prove 1. So the one that um, is most obvious is 11. Um, so 101 is prime, so we go, yes, it's prime. Um, if we have f of 11, what we get is 11 squared minus 11 plus 11, well, which is simply equal to 11 squared. Well, if we know, our, we know about prime numbers, it only has two factors, um, one and itself. Um, this can be multiplied. This is... This is not a prime because it's actually a square number. So we say, therefore, um, f of n equals n squared minus n plus 11 um, is not always prime. Now, the catch with this, it can be a little work, a lot of work to find out what that number is. You might have drawn up a table of values. So Sometimes that's an option, so you put n and then fn, and you go through your numbers. Um, in an exam, we wouldn't put something where the answer was, I guess, the 105th digit. It should look a little bit more obvious, because the skill you're trying to show is that um, you can actually um, be able to use a counterexample. So the next thing I want to talk about is what happens... Um, when we have an existential statement, I guess. So we want to either prove or disprove what we call as a conjecture. So we call a statement a conjecture. So to disprove this, um, we have to really think about it. So suppose for the sake of contradiction that this is true. So we're going to say um, there is a real number, so it's existential because it, there is one, that's what it's talking about. And we're going to try and deduce a con contradiction. So we're going to say x4 is less than x, which is less than, sorry, I shouldn't put x squared, x squared. 
Okay, let x be a real number which satisfies this. So x exists in a set of real numbers. Okay, then x has to be positive because since it is greater than the non-negative number x to the power of 4. So this has to be a positive number. Okay, so if we divide all parts um, of this equation by the positive number x, what we get, so we're going to divide it all through by x, we get x3 is less than 1, which is less than x. Alright, so we've done the division. Now we're going to subtract 1 from all parts of this. So we get x3 minus 1, well, and then 1 minus 1 is 0 is less than x minus 1. Um, and the reason is to try and solve the following. So from this point, what we can do is we can actually factorise this. So what we get is x minus 1, x squared plus x plus 1 is less than 0, which is less than, well, x minus 1. Now what's common to both of these? You can see it's at x minus 1. So what we're going to do is to simplify and dividing through by x minus 1, and we get x squared plus x plus 1 is less than 0, is less than 1. Now, 0 is less than 1, which is correct. However, x squared plus x plus 1 can't actually be less than 0. So there is our contradiction, um, and we can write that out, and we say because x squared plus x plus 1 is less than 0, and it's a contradiction because x squared is positive. Therefore, x4 is less than x, which is less than x squared, um, must be false. So I guess um, what we need to know to start with, we need to know the definition of a real number. That's the first, first thing we need to do. We also need to understand that why this is positive. Okay, so why is it positive? Well, because x4 will always make a positive number. Um, so because it's x times x times x times x, um, and you can go through and prove that to yourself if you would like. Um, so this is quite a difficult um, example. You might want to go through some of the examples, particularly on page um, 183 or 181 to 183 and try and work through those examples before you start the question.